And we're live. You guys done watching that? Oh. Yep. Does that jog your memories of where we left off a year ago, almost a year ago to the day? Really? It's been a year? It's been a year since we've played this. That's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. All right. So does anybody want to give a brief synopsis of what happened last time? If you don't have to, it's fine. It was a, it was a year I ago. I thought that's what the intro was that for. That was a little bit of it. But you guys are kind of on the... Re so we left off. It ended. We blew up we a hotel. surrounded by, uh, I don't know, how many stormtroopers? 50, 60, 70, 100 stormtroopers? And you guys were cornered by your arch nemesis, Jillinur. So we're going to kick off with that. You have the, the real wolf in your custody, but you have now been taken uh, by the Imperials. Let's go ahead... And let's roll our fate pool, our destiny pool. Do you guys remember how to do that? It's on your character sheets. Mm -hmm. And it's a button. I'm just trying to go to the character sheet to find it. It's on the very first page, and it's roll destiny next to the destiny pool. And that will sync with mine. All right. I got one dark, two dark side. I love it. Give me more. Oh no! Three dark side points. <laughs> We're off to a good start. Calling hacks. <laughs> right. One, two, three. Come on, give me some more. Who am I missing here? Who hasn't rolled yet? Uh, havoc. Adam. Havoc. 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 Adam, are you there? Adam, are you there? Hello? Hey. Mm -hmm. Hey. Can you roll me your destiny? Oops. One sec. Sorry about that. For some reason, like, everything muted on me. <laughs> Thank That's... you. Oh, this is not good. Any way to unsync that so we can make sure. Oh, or it's excellent. Them. It's phenomenal. depending on how you look at it. All right, so we're starting with four dark side points. Hopefully, my... he remembers to use them so we yeah, can get first some. time it's... ever. Yeah, it's it's never turned out that way actually. To be quite honest, yeah, I got my yeah. list here for for spending my points. So, you guys are <laughs> surrounded. By Imperials. Um, let me put up a picture of your old nemesis here to remind you. He's staring at you. He's grinning. He's smiling. He's very pleased with uh, what has just transpired. Where is this guy's picture? Ba -ba -ba. There he is. Remember, he is a evil, xenophobic Imperial officer who you captured on your very first mission and brought him in. And uh, he has somehow seemingly found his way out or broken out of the rebel uh, camp that he was being held in. And you don't know how, but he's found his way to you. And uh, it, the shoe is on the other proverbial foot right now. So he smiles and he grins and he points a blaster at the group of you. And he goes, ah, my old friends. Ah. Uh, You've caused quite a mess here on Belderon. You'll be coming with me in my shuttle, and we'll be going to Coruscant, where you will be held prisoner and interrogated, and eventually, if you survive, end up on a Kessel mining camp. Now, move along. He snaps his fingers, and a number of stormtroopers close in on you, and they grab you, and they manhandle you, and they strip you of your weapons and your gear. And you guys are knocked with the butts of their blaster rifles. And you black out. And the last thing you remember is seeing his grinning face and the wolf standing next to him. The true wolf standing next to him. It is some time when you come to. And you are all separated in uh, cells. 
on in, in the underdark not in the underdark <laughs> yeah with none of your gear and i'll never give you your spell book <laughs> oh, mike um <laughs> yeah no stripped of all your gear you come to and you're all in separated cells you can see each other you're 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 in a brig and uh as far as you can tell you're you're on a you're on a ship so you guys wake up on there and what seems like a day or two passes um stormtroopers or you know standing guard outside the doors of this this cell block uh you have officers coming and going petty officers they bring you food um on day three though they come in let's let's roll a die here how many people got tonight four they come in and they grab you aisha moore and they pull you away without a word they just open your cell they beat you into submission and they drag you off and Zool and Mel and Havoc watch in horror, not knowing what is what is transpiring, what is taking place. When you guys ask where you're taking her, you're told to shut up. The stormtroopers come in and they beat you into submission. Sounds After a fun. few, what's that? Sounds fun. Yeah, it's no, it doesn't. Time. After a few hours, Aisha Moore is dragged back into the brig uh she appears to be knocked out she's bruised and battered there's like uh carbon scoring on her body and she's tossed back into the cell this continues on they go down the line next they take you havoc and they pull you into a room they interrogate you they strap you to a to a torture device similar to that one that uh, we saw in empire strikes back that han solo was strapped into where there were those shocks going off in his face and you're you're asked all sorts of questions about the rebellion where the secret base is um wh- why did you defect from the imperials um they tempt you with uh with making a deal he doesn't cry out like han yeah they tempt you with making a deal turning the others in and they they grind you for information uh, eventually you're knocked out from the pain and return to your cell and this continues on with Zool and Mel and you are all you're all one by one taken in there and interrogated over and over again by uh, by Noor who seems to take great pleasure in this I'm going to have everybody take some stress based off of this so did we recover from stress previously you did recover from stress previously. Strain, I should say. Sorry, strain. You're all going to gain six strain based off the interrogation. And you can, yes, undo any strain that you had previously. Okay. So does it appear like we are in a... Um, oh, what's the ship name? The type of ship... Uh, why am I spacing it? Star Destroyer? Uh, okay. Yeah. Are we on a is Star that... Destroyer or are they, we in this small ship? You can't uh, tell. You're, you're unable to tell. Uh, you've only well, seen the brig so far. Tell if, we'd be able to tell if we were in the... Um, gosh, why am I spacing the name? That's it's true. the three-winged ship. The... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Imperial Shutter? Yeah. Lambda oh, yeah, uh, Shutter? Lambda. Yeah, Lambda. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to keep calling are it the we, Shuttle Tidarium because that's what it's called in it, Return of the Jedi, but that's the actual name of the shuttle. Right. Uh, yes, a Lambda class shuttle. That's what you guys had at one point. Um, you know what? Uh, the interior looks very familiar in the layout to the Lambda class shuttle that you uh, you guys uh, one time did have one and flew, so it is familiar to you, and it does look familiar. Okay. So, I mean, we're not talking like thousands of people on this ship nope as far not as thousands can, can we see like the the rear exit to this ship or any other exits or is it just are we in the holding cell or the so cargo you're in a, it's a, you're in a modified area where there's been a, where a holding cell has been created um from what you remember when you had your lambda class shuttle there's there's like a a walkway that lowers from the bottom of the ship that you walk mm-hmm. down and out of to exit mm-hmm. the ship. Mm-hmm. 
but we don't see that anywhere. Not um, while you're being dragged from area to area. Okay. Is there anything you want to ask of them while you're being pulled away and tortured during these sessions? Is there anything you want to do? Is there some wheels you want to put in motion? No, that's okay. What uh, what season are we in? Season? Like yeah, are we like in winter? Contemporary summer? to no, contemporary to um. Uh, oh, movie. Or, yeah. So we started the very first episode just just after the destruction of the first Death Star. So we're still months after that took place. Okay. I'd say a good nine months after the destruction of the first Death Star. All right. Aisha Moore is going to spit and curse at whoever's dragging her away every time if she's not unconscious. Yeah, okay. You spit You spit blood, you know, on the shiny white armor of a stormtrooper, and they beat you uh, till you're knocked out and drag you out of the room. It is always, is it always uh, stormtroopers doing a beating with uh, Nor? It is. Kind of leading the way? Okay. Yes, it is stormtroopers. As much as I'd like to introduce death troopers, it's not death troopers now. Though I do have the stats for them and I want to use them. (laughs) (laughs) No zombie troopers. Nope, no zombie troopers. How about midget troopers? Not yet. Yet. That's Jordy. <laughs> Not yet. So, this seems to go on for days. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys were quite far out um, in the outer rim there on Belderon. I have it, that square on it on our map there. And you are wa- along one of the, the hyperspace routes. So, for some reason, the map isn't showing anymore. For me. The map isn't showing? Yeah, it's weird. Like my whole screen went black for a couple seconds and then it came back up. So I don't know what the deal is. Try was. reloading uh roll twenty. You can also try adjusting a zoom level sometimes. That'll make force the map back. Yep, there you go. Yay, it's Wes. Our, our IT. All right, so this goes on for what feels like days, but you really have no idea. There's no really no measure for the passage of time in this ship. And you're sitting in your cells, and suddenly you hear a crash, and the ship shudders and shakes. And sirens go off, and they enter red alert. You see troopers start to shudder, and grab their weapons and man up. And again, the ship is rocked by something. And suddenly, with one big heave, you're all knocked off your feet as the uh, the ship is hit one last time. And you can hear what sounds like like m- like metal being cut into. And suddenly, a poof. And you hear screaming and blaster fire setting off. You hear, Ooh, <laughs> you hear uh, stormtroopers calling for backup. You hear uh, officers crying out. Uh, there, uh, a trooper runs into the room, one's dressed in all black, and checks in on you guys briefly. And as he does, he crumbles to his feet as he eats blaster fire. And through the doorway, you see four individuals dressed in, in Rebel, Rebel Alliance uh, Army-issued gear. You see a human, a roadie, and a Twi'lek, and a and a gank enter into the room, and uh, they're 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 systematically making their way through the ship, cutting down stormtroopers, imperial officers, anything in in their way, and they 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 make their way straight for the cells. Uh, the Twi'lek goes over to the controls and starts punching in a number of combinations and codes, and suddenly the doors open up on all your cells. 
and they make their way over to to the to the group of you and they they are can you can you can you make it are you are you able to move on your own quick we don't have long yeah i'm good yeah so you guys step out of the cells you look around and you take stock and unfortunately this seems to have taken place while aisha moore was away being interrogated in the latest round Mm. we left one behind no we can't leave her what who who says the the human aisha (sighs) listen it's 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 getting hot there's there's backup coming there's more imperials we heard them call for a star destroyer that's entering the uh the area right away we need to get out of here now we'll get her another time let's go goonies never die (laughs) and they grab you (laughs) and they start shoving you towards the uh to the area where they cut their way into the ship with uh with a docking pod all right i had to at least play it out because you know yeah i know even though when aisha moore is no I longer can't. with the group this is her appreciate it for I have now to. it is it is part of my thing my duty <laughs> she, she's a werewolf I can't oh no stand she's the thought of her. leaving someone behind so there you go all right well she was annoying but <laughs> she wasn't. Yes, she was. <laughs> you hardly knew her. You always had problems with me. <laughs> she really did. Not like fly. <laughs> not like Mel. Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. Whatever, fly boy. Oh. Yeah, exactly. See, I completely forgot about that. I thought you guys yeah. got along. Like no. It was like the only character development that we had. <laughs> it's true. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. So these guys are in uh, in a small freighter. They they well they board the uh, the boarding pod and it detaches and they make their way back to a small freighter nearby. And uh, they take stock. They take count. They're like, okay, we got we got we got the failing, we got the Karelian, and we got the human. But uh, the tweak got left behind, and then uh, the roading goes. Oh, the, the the boss won't like this. He goes, we'll, "We'll we'll get her. We'll go back for it. It's just it's too hot. We got to get out of here. We got most of them. Let's go." So they they ask you guys, "How how are you? Were you were you treated well? Like what 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 happened there?" No, it sucked. It was horrible. What did what did they do? Look at us. Uh, look at us, dummy. Like you look terrible. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, listen, you didn't uh you didn't tell them anything, did you? I told them everything about your mom. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets he gets agitated and he gets ready. You see him like rear back, fists clenched. And uh the gank steps steps in and kind of like holds him back. He goes, "No, no, it's it's not worth. It. They they they've been through a lot. Let's uh let them rest. Let them rest. They've they've been through quite a bit. Yeah, listen to him. <laughs> Probably so, shouldn't be asking dumb questions, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh they show you guys to uh to to uh, a room, some quarters, and they open the door up, and and inside you see a Jawa and uh and an elderly uh human with an eye patch. And they, uh, the door opens and, uh, they, they push the three of you in there and, uh, almost like uncharacteristically, you guys get there and they just start shoving you in. Then all of a sudden they hit some, uh, pad on the door and like a, a, in a, an, uh, a, like an electric door beam goes over it like a cell, like the cell you just escaped. And they chuckle and go, <laughs> Suckers. Well, Popara's gonna be happy with this haul. We're one shy, but we got most of them. Jordy and Stig, you guys have been captured by these guys a few days previous. Uh, they're bounty hunters who work for a hut by the name of Poparo. And you guys have been stuck in this cell for uh, the last few days. And you now have some new cellmates uh, who have joined you. Actually, three rather famous cellmates who are all over the galactic news these days for the assassination of of the wolf. St- 
Stig, why don't you go ahead and describe your character? Because he's new, and we'll do the same for Jordy. All right. Uh, Stig is an old gruff-looking soldier. You can tell that he's been around. He's seen everything. He looks like the guy who, like, no nonsense, directly to the point. He does wear an eye patch. He may or may not be missing an eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a ruse, a clever ruse. Uh, yeah, I don't know yet. Maybe he is. I don't have a story for that. That's where you keep your key. But uh, he was recruited like as long ago as he can remember by the rebellion to help get people in and out of out of situations. Before that, he worked. I don't even remember what planet. He's from some planet. He worked as like a uh, map behind you. Yeah. He worked as like an industrial dock worker or whatever. You know, he would do whatever needed to get done, move cargo, patrol at night, whatnot. He'd done that for as long as he can remember before he before he worked for the or started working for the rebellion. All right. So you have a fellow rebel among your ranks. And then you got Jordy. Who or what is a Jordy? Does he have a visor? Jordy is from the planet Geonosis before the cleansing of the Empire decided to gas the planet with some kind of virus. He worked on the Death Star bits before all hell broke loose. He decided to get off the planet. He boarded a ship of a uh, bounty hunter and he got dropped off in Corellia where he pursued his career as a bounty hunter, taking on odd jobs here and there. Finally, Got some credits to his name, bought some gear, and headed further out to the galaxy to pursue the Empire uh, and just take him down that way. Other than that, he seems kind of cheerful, despite his surroundings. Alright, so you fellas are currently under the capture of a hut crime boss. What... Why would a hut be after the two of you? Sometimes assassinations don't go the way you want, and sometimes the wrong mark gets blown up instead. Sometimes people are insistent that it's their lunchbox and not the other guy's. Not my fault. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm innocent. I've only done what I've done. Stig is maintaining his innocence. Oh no, I did that stuff. It was hilarious. So, oh yeah, Jordy. Jordy takes full credit for what he's done. It, it wasn't his mark, but it was still some butthole from the other end of space selling death sticks to children. So no. So Damn hot. But so you, you, who are you guys? You're you not, guys know each you're other. You're not the ones. Yeah, do you guys know each other? Are you traveling with one another? Or did you meet in this cell? Up to you, Stig. Either way, Jordy knows what's behind that eye patch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what makes your eyes glow. Or do I? Uh, you probably did the same. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll say we've known each other for a bit. Gotten some trouble. Matter of fact, I'm the reason why you're stuck in here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's see, he's innocent, but he totally was next to me the time it happened. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, so you guys all find yourselves locked up um in the possession or some hut. You don't know well, you know it's Popara the hut. Uh, the only person who may, or people who may know anything about him would maybe be Zool or Havoc, I'm, I'm thinking. It's possible. You may have heard of Popara. Oops. I'll have nothing to do with the huts. Stay away from them. 
Havoc, would you have had any dealings or knowings with the Huts? Uh... Well, I mean, he was a wink wink gun runner. Yeah, you, you were, weren't you, for the Imperials? Mm hmm. I can roll. Would, would I roll an underground? Yeah. Or underworld? Underworld? Underworld. Is that a skill in this? No. Underworld or knowledge, or knowledge trio. Oh, is it? Yeah, go ahead and run, roll an underworld. And, oh, I get to set the difficulty. I forgot about that. Let me set the difficulty on my end. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, God. Difficulty set. <laughs> success, oh, success. Apparently, I know. Advantage. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of Poparo. He, uh, he belongs to the, the Angelus, uh, clan and he's a uh, he's a, a petty uh, quartermaster on the uh the moon of nar Shada. and all of you have heard of nar Shada. it's known as the smuggler's moon it is the dark seedy underbelly of the of the galaxy if there was a dark twin to coruscant it would be nar Shada. the whole moon is one giant city but it's this like smog filled uh crime ridden just piece of filth in the galaxy this is where bounty hunters congregate this is where if people are looking to get lost they go to uh, if you're on the run if you're a bad person you generally head to narshada and uh you set up there it is the 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 moon that accompanies nalhata the homeworld of the huts and if you're looking on the map, it is directly below Havoc's character. If you go straight down, you see Toydaria, then you see Nalhata, and then you see Narshada is right below it. And that whole little squiggly line all around that area, that's hut space. So there really is no Imperial law there. The Imperials kind of keep their, their noses clean of that area and all the dark goings-ons that take place there. Real question is, what did you guys do to the huts to make them attack the Empire way out of their space? What did we do? We screwed over a hut once, didn't we, I think? Uh, you never got involved with a hut. You got involved with a Zabrak uh, crime lord. You ran into didn't... him in your very first mission, and then you ran into his thugs again on the last mission. Yeah, but didn't they have ties to the huts? Didn't Solzem like send porn to somebody? Oh, that's right, he did. I completely forgot about that. Hut porn. That's right. <laughs> it's all the slug slime. I forgot about that. He blackmailed someone to a hut, and there was some sort of yeah adult hut materials that were involved, <laughs> but he did send something to hut space. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. He like yeah. was like using yeah. like some transponder of the empire to like bounce stuff through hut space You're to make right. it look like, well, look so like well, it was the empire in the hut. You, well, I'm using threat that you haven't even rolled yet. And you wronged Popara. <laughs> the Thanks Zool for that. We're tying it, it all wasn't back. even here. That's yeah. fine. Mike wouldn't mind. He'll so, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I'll look at I'll look at the lizard face and be like, nice job. <laughs> he just like emits pheromones. That's all he does. Yeah. He just smells funny. Don't let him close to a computer, man. Bad things will happen. Yeah. So seems like things have come full circle from what you can ascertain. Thanks, Zool. Thanks. But hey, at least we aren't with the other ever Empire guy. With the other what, sorry? With the other Empire guy who hates our guts. The xenophobe that had you captured? Yeah. What is his that name? you know nothing about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Noor. Noor. I'll just, uh, I'll just kind of look around and be like, well, these, this host still sucks, but it's better than our last host. And I'd rather go to Hut Space as opposed to Coruscant. And 
yeah. So it's a win-win situation. It seems to me. Yeah. So you guys travel, um, for quite some time, uh, during the travels, one of the, uh, the Twi'lek comes over and he's got a data pad and he goes, Hey, look, the boss was right. Looks like this paid off. It's going to be a big payday for everyone involved. You guys are famous. And he holds up his uh, data pad and on it, uh, you see, where am I going here? You see a news report on the Imperial uh, news net and uh, it's showing off your, your handiwork. So you see reports that the wolf has been killed. He was attacked in a bombing uh, at a at a hotel on Belderon, which you guys did do. You used uh, thermal detonators there in the in the presidential suite or whatever it was. Right. So this has been going on nonstop on the news. This is the big news. This is this is celebrity death essentially, and uh, during the news reports, uh, every so often. You see, uh, let's see here. You see, uh, oh, this pops up. And mm-hmm. <laughs> one of these pop up. And uh, That's we got me. one for Zool here too, but he's not hes not with us. And uh, yeah, you guys are, are wanted men by the Imperials. You've got a, a price of 500,000 credits on your head currently is the asking mm-hmm. price. For the the death, the assassination of the beloved Imperial fighter ace, the wolf. But you guys truly know that it was just the puppet was killed in the attack and the true one lives. But the, uh, <laughs> they, they are wanted men. They're very wanted. Um, but uh, the Imperial propaganda machine is spinning this and they're using this to their benefit to gain uh, sympathy against the uh, rebellion you guys are a bunch of just like terrorists how do i get the pictures of you dealing your wares don't you worry about that havoc don't you worry about that <laughs> so the the twi'lek goes ah the boss's gamble paid off pretty big looks like we're all gonna be rich why don't you guys uh, just keep yourselves cozy in there while we make our way uh to go to go bring you in I will do that, but uh, I could use a little bit of uh, medicine here. As you can see, we're not in the best of shapes. They have the death uh, sentence on uh, 14 systems. Medicine? Wow, you guys you guys know how to make friends. Medicine, you'll be fine. We're almost there. It's barely a scratch. Looks like you just got a, just a, a little banged up there in the interrogations. Aren't you the the famous Mel, ace hero pilot of the rebellion? You can handle it. I am Mel, but mm, my reputation is a little overblown. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. All right, overblown, just like what you did to that building. That there was the Jawa that snicker was, at you. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> You just hear Utini, 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 <laughs> and you translate to <laughs> to common or whatever we call. It. I can't remember what we call it. Basic, basic. basic. Yeah. Translate it to basic, because the rules, as we're digging through them, when you have a party member who does not speak basic, you can't understand them. Just like how Han understands Chewie. So yes, you hear Utini, 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 but you uh, get the gist of what he's saying. Just like that atrocious Pokemon trailer where the kid can understand. Let's Pikachu. not talk about that. That was <laughs> understand Pikachu and everything. That was my Pikachu. childhood being dumped on. Yeah, well, it's bound to happen to everything. Yeah, there you go, Pika Pika. So they hear Otini Otini. Um. <laughs> so yeah, you're denied. You're denied any uh, medical attention. Pff, whatever. We'll be there soon. You'll be tended to. Just stay quiet. Try not to cause any trouble. We don't want to have to use these if we don't have to. And he holds up his blaster. It's just a heavily modified uh, blaster rifle in his hands. And for the two of you, the boss has plans for you. 
talking to Stig and Jordy. Well, man, I'm innocent. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're all innocent. So he walks away, and you guys are kind of left on your own now to process this uh, information, this bomb that's been dropped on you, that you are very wanted men in the galaxy, and you're heading to probably one of, well, second to Coruscant, one of the most dangerous places to be a wanted man. The... I can tell him where he can shove that uh, heavily modified gun. Oh, yeah. The moon of Nar Shaddaa. So, well, you guys. Uh, probably one of you guys is high profile, I guess. How long have you guys uh, been on this ship? A couple days. How many uh, people know. they got on this ship? I don't know. Do I need to roll? How many people? No, there's there's four. It was the the four that you guys saw crash the ship. So the human, the Rodian, the Twi'lek, and the Gank. That's all Just you've seen. Just four. On the heavily armored, heavily armed individuals. Who's who's the pilot? Do you know? Probably the Rodian. Guessing it's not the Twilight because he keeps coming back here and sticking data pads in our faces. Yeah. Yeah, from what you two can ascertain, it is the uh, the Rodian. I actually had that written down. So <laughs> good on you for reading my mind. The Rodian, uh, as far as you can tell, is the is the pilot of the ship. Uta Guta. So, you guys make small talk. There's not much else to do in your cell. And uh, you you shortly uh, begin to what feels like breakthrough atmosphere. And uh, you, can, you can only guess that you have uh, reached your destination. Within uh, about an hour's time, the ship sets down. And the, uh, the four... The four men, who you assume are only bounty hunters under the employ of uh, Popara, come for you. Completely decked out, head to toe in armor and weapons. And tell you to... They deactivate the door and tell you to, to get up and to follow them. Are we going to go see... Uh... Punta Slugface? Is that where we're going? The Twi'lek is actually you. Shut up! Listen, I don't like you! That's what I heard you calling him, though. I didn't he's not, say he's not any like, such thing. He's not gonna like it when I tell him that you said that. What? You shouldn't have said that stuff. What? What? Stop! Hey, thanks for subscribing. For following. Um, He goes, yeah, yeah listen, don't, don't don't make me use this. And he starts getting all agitated and he starts making his way towards you. And uh, the the human reaches out and he stops and goes, hey, listen, don't let him get to you. This is what he does. He's a smart ass. Don't let him get to you. The boss will not be happy if one of them shows up dead. All right? Boss isn't going to be happy that you called him Puta Slugface. Again, it is, that's it, that's it, and then two of them jump in and they hold him back as he's like launches at you, Mel. Do you have a crush on him? Is that the problem? <laughs> I knew about your mom, but you too. Weird. With that, uh, the 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 gank steps forward and he just like butts you with the rifle, and uh, you take two more strain for that. Yeah. I didn't hear. Are we like shackled? What's going on? Yeah, you you are you're cuffed. Mm. You're, they still have the cuffs on them from the Imperials, and they cuffed you guys. So he he backhands you. He winds up, hits you with the butt of the rifle. He goes, "Shut up! Don't antagonize him." He says to you, Mel. You you pick up that uh, that he's you know the one of the group that's easily. Uh, Easily roused. The others kind of put up with him. Do it again. You get another crack to the head, flyboy. 
and they start shoving you uh shoving you out of the out of the ship and you guys enter your first sight of nar shada i don't none of you have been here previously the only one again who who may have been here at one point was havoc but uh i don't know if your imperial duties ever sent you here seeing as how the huts and the imperials are not on the best of terms especially on the uh the smuggler's moon and you see this dark dingy city it's a city built with on a on top of a city on top of a city on top of a city you you can see down a ledge and you see like old 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 buildings and structures and new glorious ones have built been built atop it the sky always seems to be a dark smoggy gray as far as you can tell it's daytime but you don't really know there's a slight sun poking through but as far as you know that could be the moon you kind of choke and wheeze a little bit as the smog hits your lungs and you take in the sights your eyes adjust a little bit and there's like neon signs everywhere there's people walking about um going here and there uh you as soon as you step off the ship also you get people looking and pointing at you it seems that uh you're being recognized for your handiwork and you see up on video screens uh, on the streets, you can see the flashing of the wanted posters with your images on them. And you guys are standing in front of a, a large, grand building. And they go, all right, come on, move, move along. The boss is waiting for you inside. Let's go. And they start to show uh, you. Are uh, hands handcuffed in the front or the back? In the back. When people glance at me in recognition every once in a while i'm gonna like oh <laughs> give him give him the old wink and gotcha and, <laughs> finger yeah. guns yeah yeah there's there's like people ink. pointing at you and and such and yeah you're you're just kind of like hey yeah yeah it's me i was thinking if it was in the front you're gonna like cover your face like a criminal on tv but uh no this is mel we're talking about mel would never yes. cover his face That's <laughs> he's, right. too, he's much too it's... vain yeah, it's too. He's too pretty to cover his face. He's okay. like only fifty thousand credits. Five hundred thousand. Yeah, it's five hundred. Half a million only credits 500, each. Five hundred thousand credits for the for the assassination of an imperial. Uh, I think we should sell board. ourselves, and then we can buy whatever ship we want. Call me back when it's worth two million. <laughs> so you guys are ushered in. We Jeez. should have brought Aisha more. Then we could have sold her off. So, to the Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, you guys are ushered into this, this grand building. And as you enter, uh, there, are, there are guards standing at the doors. There's a mixture of like, ganks and Rodians and Gamorians, uh, Nictos. All the races that you hear associated with the huts seem to be here. The ones that are always under their employ. You see a little, you see a toy Darian fluttering around as you enter and he looks you up and down and he goes, Oh, he's expecting you. I didn't think you'd arrive so soon. And you guys are, are ushered uh, straight ahead into a grand, grand, grand room. I'm just looking at the pictures of Jordy uh, <laughs> on the discord. And you're brought into this, this grand chamber and sitting at the far end of it is a hut garbed in robes. Here, I'll, I'll bring you over. Does his voice sound like, hello? <laughs> hello, guys. No. <laughs> There's a hut sitting at the far, far end of this room. And you're brought forward. Next to him is a is a Duros. There's Gamorreans standing guard all over the place. There's some Weequay. Um, There's a droid next to him. And there's others milling about who you can only assume are members of his court. So you guys are brought forward. You've got the, uh, the bounty hunters behind you and you're ushered up and this, this slug kind of withers and turns around and looks you over and goes, Oh, <laughs> you did it. I didn't think you'd be capable of it. And he slithers over to, uh, to Zool and he kind of sniffs him. And he uh, opens his mouth and his big tongue comes out and he just kind of like, just kind of just barely touches him with the tip of his tongue <laughs> and then slithers away and goes, you've, you've caused me a lot of trouble, you know. 
you're gonna fetch quite a price. Do you know who I am? Well, this one behind me said that your name was Punta Slugface. <laughs> he starts to, to cough and you can see he's kind of thrown off and he all of a sudden sits and straightens himself up and, you know, at the, the shot and you see him sit up in pride. What, what did you call me? I don't know. I thought it was kind of rude myself, but it's that dude back there. I am Popara the Hut. And I kind of look back at the guy that I was poking fun at and I'm like, seriously, like, this guy's your boss. Like, why would you say that about him? <laughs> oh, and the the guy the behind you, the human, is like, I, I didn't say it. I didn't say that. Listen, this one's got a mouth on him. If you were smart, you'd gag him until they come for him. And you see Poparo, he, he steeples his fingers together and he he hunches back down. He lets he relaxes a little bit more. Oh, ah, smart one. Hmm. No, he's I've pretty got dumb. Plans for you? Not him, you. Oh. He gets he gets all agitated. The little uh the little droid there next to him starts kind of fluttering around and beeping and hollering. When he gets agitated every time. And uh he slithers back over towards the uh the five of you and he goes, hmm. Mm, the three wanted men. I have special plans for you. The two others! You're gonna be fed to my pets. But you three, you three are worth a lot of money. Indeed. Would have been worth more had your idiot boys back there uh, not left one of our compatriots. He gets uh, visibly shaken and he goes, what? And he slithers over to the floor. Well, you left one behind. What? How, how, did, how did you do this? Well, this is going to come out of your pay. And they all start to get kind of, they all back up and go, hey, 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 look, look, we were under a lot of pressure. There was a Star Destroyer that was coming down on it. Listen, we did the best we could. You got three of the four. Yeah, that's where, that's, that's a million and a half right there. All right. We were in the middle of space. There was no one around us for miles. All they had to do was unlock a door, but no, oh. the mm. fat one decided not to. Yeah. The fat one. And the one that called you Slugface, he's the one who was the coward and didn't said that he wanted to move. But let, let's go back to this feeding us to your pets thing. That doesn't That's seem not. necessary. <laughs> Why would you Gamorians, remind him of that? A couple of the Gamorreans inch up on the uh, the bounty hunters as things are getting a little escalated here and oh, yes my pets yeah They're very hungry very hungry you uh you owe uh, you're not worth much money to me and uh you will serve as entertainment for my my court and he raises his arms and everybody in the room starts to chuckle <laughs> at that and you guys are kind of like oh i wonder what he's got in store for us I just kind of shrug and I'm just like, well, I mean, you can feed those guys to them, but I would really start with, you know, Baldy back here. He's got the attitude and he was the one that clearly left the $500,000 on the ship. With that, you, you, you'd never really seem to have gotten to him. It was the, it was the Twi'lek that you're, you were getting to, but now you seem to have cracked this human he does not like being embarrassed especially in front of the hut in front of his boss and he raises his rifle and he starts launching at you and with that the two gamorians grab him and throw him to the ground and they start beating on him with their vibro axes like with the butts of them they're not, they're not cutting him up or anything and poparo just steeples his fingers and goes, <laughs> oh don't hurt him too bad perhaps perhaps he will be food for my pets as well and the the other three kind of look in shock, and they, they they back down, and the human on the ground is kind of a bloody mess right now, and spitting teeth out. Well, at least you tenderized him first. <laughs> Papara goes, I may or may not sell you to the Imperials. I have a better idea. I'm going to sell you to the highest bidder. We are going to hold an auction here 
I'm going to invite the rebels, and I'm going to invite the Imperials, and see who you're worth more to at the end. Or we could work for you. Well, how is that going to bring me the kind of money you're asking? You've already seen our capabilities. I mean, imagine the things that we can do with your backing. Hmm. I am not a stupid hut. I know how the Imperial machine works. That's why I'm having this conversation with you, because you're not a stupid hut. My... That guy behind me is stupid. You're not. <laughs> All right. I... <laughs> Are you asking that, Havoc? How did he get pictures of you dealing his wares? Or no, <laughs> that was your old question. Yeah. Um. He goes, no, my spies. My spies know what really took place. I'm Belderon. Well, then you know that we never really killed the right guy, so you're fine. It's no big deal. Yes, but you're worth a lot of money, and you've caused me a lot of stress. stress. You. And he's, he looks at Zool. You. You, you owe me. Is this about the slug porn? He whispers at Mel. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> you whisper it, you're like, ja, 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 ja. <laughs> <laughs> He's like hopping up. He's just like hopping at your feet. This little Joe. <laughs> what do, do, I just kind of, kind of, well, if I could pat him on his head, I would pat him on his head and be like, yes. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what it's about. So, in a few days' time, representatives from both factions will be in attendance here. We will put you up for auction and sold to the highest bidder. Are you going to put us up as a lot, or are we going to go individually? Because I think I might draw a little bit more on my own <laughs> than the other guys. Oh, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mel. Um, he goes, no, oh, no, I'll sell you as a lot. I'll get more for you that way. You're the, you're the wolf slayers. It's not been my experience on eBay, but that's what I do. <laughs> eBay? <laughs> what is this eBay? Jordy looks up at Mel going, you'd probably get sold off to some creepy fanboy who wants to do weird <laughs> things. <laughs> but as a group you might actually have a chance of going back to the rebellion or back to the torture I'd prefer to go back to the rebellion that'd be nice <laughs> at least they're getting sold I'm dinner <laughs> <laughs> he laughs and the court laughs at that stick and he steeples but, his fingers again. And he does a little, problem, little T-Rex clap with his little little hands that he's got there. And Jordy tries not to laugh at that clap. Yeah, it's it's hard not to laugh at it. He's a comical character. He's, uh, this isn't, uh... You, when you guys hear of huts, people across the galaxy have an image of a hut in their head. They have... The image of uh, like a hut crime lord, a big, obese, fat slug. And he, this one's a little bit more lean. He's wearing clothes. You know, the, the, the huts you've heard of are usually just these big, lounging, grotesque, bulbous slugs. And this one, uh, this one's a little vain. This one has some strange mannerisms. He can get a little worked up. He's very proud from what you've seen. And he, he's where he's proudly displaying uh, his, uh, his house insignia on his cloak he goes oh, for the time being you'll be locked up in my cells to the day of the auction well if that's the case we could use a little bit of patching up here because um, you know we've been under a little bit of stress and we're going to bring more money if you if we're in good health right so We'll go to the cells, but if you could, why don't you send someone to, uh, you know, with some medicine and some, some good food, fatten us up. Make us uh, you'll get some gruel 
and you'll be attended to. You won't die. Oh, Stig's a good that. medic. Jordy points out the, the gruff old man over there. The eye patch. I mean, it's true. I can do that. Hmm. I just kind of nod approvingly. <laughs> oh, right. half blind mm-hmm. old guy. Great. Great. Uh, so, Hopefully yeah, you guys are uh, ushered off. Uh, by a number of his guards, by a bunch of Gamorian guards, to uh, some cells, which you're thrown into and quickly locked up. <laughs> but um, when they do so, they also uh, they remove your cuffs, and uh, they give you a plate of gruel, and uh, they kind of just like grunt at you. <laughs> All right, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by, BH. I'll talk to you later. Uh, they grunt at you and uh, snort and uh, leave the room. And so you're left in a in a common cell area where you guys can all kind of see each other from your separate cells and you could talk to one another. But uh, you find yourselves in a similar situation to uh, one that you're just in. I just kind of look around and be like, do you realize that this is the third cell that we've been in in the last three days? Is it the third cell? Must be a doomed record, huh? It's pretty good. And that pig ate half my gruel. What the? <laughs> and who serves a plate of gruel? Why not a bowl? <laughs> Are they trying to make this difficult? Of course. It's just kind of like falling all over the place. Give you a fork instead of a spoon? They give you a spork. But they gave me a <laughs> A spoon, but it has teeth marks in it with holes. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of look back and are just like, Jabba Jabba, are you going to eat all of that? You want me to pour it on your head? Jabba Jabba. I guess. <laughs> Seems better if you just pour it in my bowl. You got a bowl? <laughs> well, yeah. I'm worth more than you. Oh man! So, so far, all you've done so far is kill the wrong guy and blow up a giant building, and now you're famous. Uh, Can you even fly? When was the last time you flown a ship? That's a great question. <laughs> a very long time since you flown a ship. I think since uh, episode two. Yeah. Oh damn! We started. In a ship. And I, I basically 170 you XPs of points against. <laughs> yeah, I, f- I forced you guys into a ship so I could give an opportunity to fly. <laughs> I had other opportunities created, and you guys kind of always found a way around it. Yeah, so that's your own damn fault. Players. <laughs> players always ruining the best laid plans. So here's the cell block that you guys are currently in, and all your little cells. You're uncuffed. You got your plates of gruel, which just kind of slopped on there, and falling off and you guys are just kind of rotting away in these cells for a few hours after a few hours the door opens and uh you see a a figure enter you see the duros that was uh that was standing next to uh popara the hut enter and uh make his way into the room and kind of address the group of he goes uh i am uh lostev Popara's Major Domo. Are you well, the five of you? Well, we could use a little patching up. Yes, yeah, you keep saying oh. that. Bad. Has Bad he actually week. entered or is he just straightened? Uh, His he's, pride he's, has been harmed. He's entered the room and he's standing there kind of amongst the, the five cells talking to you. I did get a rifle butt to the stomach and to the face remember yeah well listen i uh yes uh, he he goes over to mel he goes i i might have a proposition for the the five of you uh do you uh, would do you care to to hear it out 
Absolutely. As long as it's nothing sexual. No, no, no. Listen, I, uh, I'd be willing to free you from these cells and get you out of here, but, uh, you must return the favor and help me out. And? So who needs to die? I'll fill in the details at the later date. I, and he goes, he opens up his cloak and there's, uh, there's five guns in there. He goes, I, I can give you what I have. I was able to acquire these, but, uh, and I'll sneak you out through the secret entrance, but, uh, I will have to meet up with you <coughs> at a later time. Once the, the heat has died down. Where are we supposed <laughs> to hide on this hell hole? And you'll go down to the sector below us, the the old Duro sector. There aren't any ghouls down there, are there? Cities like, or planets like these tend to be a haven for that plague. Uh, there are many strange creatures that walk those streets, and not just the, the filth and the bounty hunters. Creatures yeah, well, that have escaped better. from huts, uh, entertainment and, and sporting and such make their way down below to the various levels. It is a dangerous place, but that is why I've brought you brought you weapons. What kind well, of weapons? it's probably better than getting eaten by some Rancor or Acklay. They still make those things. <laughs> Uh, we have had a saying, Rancor for seven seasons here. I'd rather have a gun and a chance to be thrown in a pit. So he's right. got three blaster yeah. pistols and three blaster rifles. He goes, blaster oh, take, rifle me up, baby. Take, take, take your pick amongst them. And he walks over to the controls and hits a button and all your cell doors open. And he goes, please, please make your way down to the the Duro sector. It is below this one, and I and someone will meet you at the the Royal Gungan Tavern. You don't have any thermo blasters on you, do you? No, oh, you're I don't just being picky. Have any thermo detonators? I saw what you did with one on your last job. I would not dream of giving such a weapon to you lot. Got any brass knuckles? No. Lame. Hmm. So, with that, all of a sudden, some Gamorians enter the room and see, well, Stig standing out there, but the cell doors are open on the other cells. And uh, you guys are all standing there with weapons. And he goes, oh, no. They found us. Oh, Jordy's out there also. <laughs> and we're going to get into some combat and fight our way out. Do Can you I guys... just say they found you? Do you guys remember how combat works? <laughs> I win. You will a minute, right? Because I don't know. So you roll initiative, and there's no, it's not set on one particular we, person. Are we it's, surprised or not? Are we cool? You are guys cool? are cool. Cool. Because you guys had weapons, you're out of your cells. I'm going to say you weren't surprised. All right, I rolled for my NPCs. Did everybody roll? Uh, I think I did. Now, does everybody need to set up their given weapon? I have a blaster pistol already. Okay. I have a blaster rifle already. I have a holdout blaster. Would that be good enough? You have a blaster pistol, so... Or I do have, I do have a blaster pistol. Sorry. Okay. I tried to choose easy things that would also suit your characters. Um, so we have two PCs that get to act first. Who wants to do that? And what do you want to do? I suppose, uh, Jordy would probably be the fastest one in this lot. Yeah, sure. If Jordy wants Given to act first. Given his experience. He also got... has quick strike. Okay. 
So you've got four Gamorians that have entered the room, all wielding Oops. vibro axes. I'm still in the cell, so yeah. The two guys standing outside the cell should probably act first, I would say. So, okay. so who wants to go first? Jordy, go Jordy. ahead. What do you want to do? Oh, well, as I was just given a, like a rifle. Did a You're given a blaster rifle, yeah. All right, so this... The Havoc roll again. Pig-looking fellow. <laughs> did Havoc accidentally roll twice? Looks like I had to roll again because uh, the first time I didn't... Under the initiative, I just rolled a cool... Okay. That's all you do, right? Yeah, it's just cool is what you roll. Well, there's like a cool in it and a vigilance in it. But, it, but it doesn't again. pop up on the turn order unless you roll initiative, roll initiative vigilance. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's all on right. the combat. I, just, I cleared one. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. All right. So, Jordy, you I saw you ping this guy down here. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's no, like... Pop a shot at him. It's... <laughs> snorting and it's raising its uh, vibro axe and making his way towards you so go ahead I'm going to set the difficulty on my end you're going to get one black and uh, and one purple for your difficulty he's charging his way towards you and it's kind of rushed than expected so you're not quite ready uh, for this big lumbering pig man to come at you let me read this thing out So you should just click add a D six per rank one okay. uh, of quick strike to combat checks against targets that have not acted yet. This in okay. So Very I good. get a boost. Yep. Is that what that is? Yes. Now, do I put that in the dice pool uh, up top? Yeah, go ahead and add it to the dice pool up top. You have to just remember to clear it. I can also add it on my end. If it's easier, and then I because I clear it at the oh, end. Oh, do of you want to do it? Rather? Yeah, I'll, how about I add it, and then I'll just clear it when you're done this round. Okay. Okay, so it's been added. Damn. Oh, I need to scroll down. Ooh, three advantage. Boom! So a success. You hit him. Where does it hit him? Oh, I would probably be aiming for center of mass for higher accuracy. Ooh, range is long. Remember that. Okay, so you hit him square in the chest and it squeals as you hit it. So as soon as as long as you hit the guy, you do your nine damage. And ten, ten damage, right. For each each uh, success. Thank you. Thanks, Wes. Yeah. And now you also have three advantage to spend. Now there should be a chart in the player handouts if you don't have it already. That shows you all the different options you can use for spending advantage. Is that uh, character combat reference? It's, it's uh, yeah, character combat reference. I will tell on you the right. this. It hits him in the chest, and he squeals and falls to the ground, withering. You have killed this first Gamorian. You see the big green chart on the bottom left side? Mm -hmm. It says... So basically, advantage or triumph, you can do any of those things for two successes. Or two advantage or triumph, you can do the other, the second column, row. And you can mix and match them, like one, one advantage for the first one, two advantage for the second one, or three advantage. So there's a carbon mark on his chest and just like smoke billowing out of it from where you hit him. So you have three advantage, and you can use that advantage to give bonuses to some of your teammates now. You so can also use it to I'm recover choose... strain. Because you do have strain. I do? Oh no, you're not one of the ones that were... No, you don't. You're not one of the other ones. And I didn't uh, badmouth people bad enough to get hit in the head. Exactly. We're strain free. Okay, uh, so I can add a uh, bonus to the next allied active character chip. You can give them a uh, boost. I'll do die. that and yep. add another boost to uh, to the other one. Spending all, I guess. I think that's so how you're going to give works. the next person two boost. 
Yeah. Okay. Two boosts one. The second one you can name a character. So it's oh. If you um, use two, it's yeah on one person. You can choose one specific. If you use both boost on, and you can. Otherwise, if you use one, it's just the next person in in order. I suppose I'll spread it out and I'll give Havoc the other one, since he looks like he's in the next danger spot. Okay, so one to Havoc and one to the next person who a- acts. Yes, Stig's acting next. Cool, Stig. So who are you? Uh, who are you aiming at? You just watch Jordy just drop one of these Gamorians right next to you. Right. Hey. Yeah, Utini. I'm going to shoot at the one to the left of the guy who came in to give us the weapons. This but I'm guessing that's like, uh, I'm sorry, the right. To the right? Yeah, the other guy. And what kind of weapon did you grab? Did you grab a blast rifle or pistol? A pistol, a pistol. Okay, yeah. You're I'm right guessing right. that's cover that they're behind. Is that a wall or like a console? It's like a it console. is a console, and there's like slight stairs leading up. So they do have a bit of cover, and you're going to get an extra setback because of that. So I'll move a little bit closer to try sure. and get a better angle. But you do have a boost. And remember, in combat, guys, I know this was our J- Jordy's first go and our, our, our uh, what you call it, back into it. But you get, um, you get a you maneuver one and, and one maneuver. Yeah. And you can also take strain, suffer two strain to take an additional maneuver. So, like, maneuvers are things like aiming your gun to gain a boost die, uh, moving, taking a guarded stance, changing gear. Unless you have a skill that says, oh, that's a free action. Right. <laughs> exactly. So just as a reminder, that sheet is there. Get yeah. uh, familiar with it. I'm going to move up to I move up while I get get better uh, line of sight on it. Yeah, if you move up there, you're actually on higher ground now, and you can see around that... Uh, okay, so there's stairs down to where they are. Console, yeah. So I'm going to take one of the setback dice away if you move up there. Okay. And you have I'm going to move up there. So you have one setback. One, uh, one purple one. Can't remember the name of it. What is it? And, uh, and you Difficulty. have one boost. Difficulty die. Do you want oh, I'm good. I'll try that. I'm not the best aim. I might end badly. Success. Seven damage. Let's wow. see. Does this guy have a uh, soak? I don't know. Is he a mook? You drop them. So what does it look like, Stig? Bacon. <laughs> smells like bacon. I'm going to move forward, look down the stairs, uh, quickly shoot. And I'm not really aiming. So I managed to hit him on like the left shoulder as he's coming towards the stairs. This is enough to knock him back and unconscious. Yeah. And now I'm in a, in a spot. Yeah, we'll say he was starting to go up the stairs and he fell down those first two stairs also that he was climbing up. And he squeals. Yeah, he does. You're pretty does good at that. <laughs> He's been practicing for the last Yeah, week. I've been, you know, I've been waiting a year for this. Um, the first one, he's going to move his way up to you, Jordy, and he's going to attempt to hit you with his, with his axe, his vibro axe. So I need to set my difficulty. Boop. Don't forget to use your dark side points. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, Especially on Jordy. Yeah, I'm going to give myself a boost. Why don't I do that? I'll give myself two oh. boost. No, one oh. boost. And I'll... Uh, Good job, Stick. <laughs> there we go. Use dark side I'm points. I'm sorry. Mm. Trying to get us some light side points. At the expense of needing to use them on me. Well, he so, can't hit you anyways because you're like small. Yeah, you're little. I'm giving myself a uh, a black die for hitting a smaller target. Don't worry, I'm. I'm playing. He has a fair. footprint of small. When targeted by a combat check, you may perform a dodge incidental. Yeah, look at that. For a number of dodging. <laughs> dodging. He was getting ready to dodge. Look at that though. You can't dodge too uh too triumph. One, Ouch. two, three, success. Oh my. Ouch. Good job, Stig. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. is it a critical? It was a great, great character, but you can roll <laughs> another one next week. <laughs> I have two thread, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was nice knowing you, Jordy. All right, let me look at my damage. So seven, eight, nine, ten damage. <laughs> I'm down already. Good Are job. Are you? 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to say this. So it's with two threat. Do you have any soak? Yeah, do you have any soak? Like, he should have some soak, right? Let me look at your character here, Jordy. Oh, two soak. And how many wounds do you have? Ten? Now I have eight. I it's have just... ten threshold. He's a little guy. So he, said he has base ten. You said twelve total then, right? Well, I think he has two it... soaks. Yeah, two soaks. Two so soaks. ten plus two, two soaks. soaks. In the... They'll always yeah. eat two of the damage. Can't tell, was it a, was it a critical hit or not? So criticals, you you actually use your um, oh, yeah. your advantage. You spend advantage to make it a critical, and then you roll on the critical table each time. And each time you roll in there, yeah. you add an ex extra ten percent to the to the roll. So that's how you can get higher and higher and higher. So you can like you can you can go ahead and initiate that off your weapon. See, yeah. Uh... So he can, he could have actually given you more difficulty by dodging. Yeah, and I was trying to say that. Yeah, he was trying to say that. Okay. So because there's two threat, I'm going to say he, he backhands you, and you're going to take strain instead. So it's non-lethal damage. So he hits you with strain the, instead of yes, wound? Yes, he hits you with the butt of his, uh, his uh, vibro axe. So what does that do for you? So instead of wounds, you're gaining strain. Being strain is just mental mainly. Mental and and physical. <laughs> it's, it's physical. But, but, it's like but you can non -life shed it. Like after combat, you get to roll to get rid of it, and you can also spend uh, advantage and, and triumph to get rid of it. You can also rest to get rid of it. And this is why Mike is terrified of rolling the dice in this game, and you guys avoided combat for five sessions in a row. We couldn't avoid this one. This was kind of forced on us. Yeah, I forced it on yeah, it you. Because this was like it's alert. This was supposed to be a learning session to get us back into combat. It's not we meant to kill It you. was deadly. Though. I learned is that Jordy is really sucky <laughs> at combat. And well, I mean, Stig is going to screw us over at every possible point. Saying at the same point in time, point. he could have had more difficulty because Jordy wanted to dodge. Yeah, Touch. it's it's a it's a learning that's a learning experience. Touch. All right, you you have to you have to pay. We have we have incidentals now. Like I have incidentals now too that I can use. So you're gonna have to like slow down a little. Sure. So um, the other one's gonna go for you there, Havoc, and swing his vibro axe your way. Do you have any sort of dodge abilities that you would like to uh, initiate? Uh no, I don't think so. <laughs> So it comes in snorting and raises its vibrorax and brings it down on you. So it hits you. What's your soak? Uh, soak's four. So he does eight damage. So you only t you take four damage. Hey. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We jump to the other PC. Who wants to go next after watching Jordy get pummeled? Havoc, go right ahead. And Havoc smashed, slashed with the axe. Yeah. I'll go next if I... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What did you grab? A blaster pistol? Yeah, blaster pistol. Okay. Um... And you have a bonus. You have a boost. So I'm making... I'm doing the boost on my end. And I've got your difficulty okay. set. A black and a purple. Um... So I'm going to say uh, never bring a vibro axe to a gunfight <laughs> <laughs> and try to shoot him point blank. Sure. Um, yeah, go for it. Squeal like a little pig. So, uh, okay, so you don't aim it. The shot goes wide. It goes uh, right in between him and the, and the door frame, which is pretty hard to do because he's rather large. So you don't succeed. You don't fail. But you have an advantage. What would you like to do with that advantage? Um, We're missing a PC on here. But that's okay. I know that Mel goes next. Uh, I'll just re recover a strain. Okay. 
I was like, thanks for the help. <laughs> okay, Mel, you're up. Last but not least. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and shoot uh, my pistol at the uh, pig over there by Jordy. By Jordy? Yeah. Okay. All right. That way I don't have to move or anything. I can just... Do you want to aim? Do you want to use a maneuver to aim to give yourself a boost? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I have done that on my end. Go ahead and roll when you are ready. Hey, now. Okay. Uh, what does this look like? You, you kill him. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I just... Nothing fancy here. I just kind of step around the corner, aim, fire, and... Uh, he's got uh what is that uh threats that he's got there yeah so i get to choose uh, or you get to choose How, what do you want to do with those threats let me ask you i'm gonna he's gonna fall on top of jordy okay just everybody after me tonight what the fuck uh, you're protected now so just pretend like you're dead so you've got a really heavy pig man on top of you yeah. Yeah. um let me see something here. Uh, Jordy, take uh, take another strain for that. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> this is Star it's Wars. Rude. This is you Star just... Wars. All right, uh, we're back at the top of the train. Jordy use the dark or, side. Jordy or Stig, who wants to go <laughs> next? You want to go, Jordy? Don't think I can. I have a fat pig on me. You go no, ahead. No, you got a free maneuver to crawl out from under there. Yeah, you can use stand. You could even out. shoot from under there. I mean, I mean, you could. It's not going to be easy, but you could shoot from under there. Oh, those crazy, crazy dice. Fuck over your friends, dice more like. Yep. Yeah, it happens. Jordy, did you want to shoot or stig? Did you want to run over there and shoot the Gamorian that's on uh that's after Havoc? I'll move out from underneath that guy and okay. fire, I suppose. Alright. Uh da -da. yeah, it's all set. Oh wait, no, you're using a sorry, you're using a long range one, so I'm making it uh a little bit more difficult because you're in a closer range band. So you've got one black and two purple just because you're firing a long range weapon in like close range. So go ahead, Jordy. So you don't He's hit, dead. you don't miss, but you generate four advantage. What would you like to do with that advantage on those lists you have? Give them all the stig. So in the form a boost or so recover I can some reduce of that strain? my strain yeah. you can reduce your strain <laughs> you could get rid of three strain and give and give stig a blue die give him a boost if you want or just take all of the all four and get rid of four strain i'll give him a boost okay that's good because i don't have the agility that these others have i'm a brawler that's right Boy, i asked for brass knuckles <clears throat> all right stig Give me my shot glove. Jordy shouts out some words of encouragement from underneath a pig man, and you uh, charge <laughs> in there. Jabba, jabba. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll move down here and shoot at this guy. Yeah, okay. Hopefully I don't hit havoc. You've got just a pistol, so let me adjust the difficulty here. I still have it set for a long range. One. So okay. what is the range? Because that's a little bit rude. So there's range bands. There's a minimum this. range, right? So there's engaged, close, medium, and long. So you're using a long range gun at essentially medium range. So Stig, go ahead and fire away at Mr. Pigman. Uh, blaster. Oh, that's... <laughs> All right. This that's is... a critical. Oh, uh, yeah. Crap. He blows what apart. does this look like? You obliterate. Uh, yeah, Havoc is now wearing a Gamoran. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. Um, you know, combat happens. 
so yeah, I'm gonna I'm actually because I get to spend that uh, that setback that you rolled there, that threat, and I'm gonna give you a strain havoc because you're caked in blood, so you take a strain due to that. Sure. Um, can I ask what's the uh, blue guy doing? He's just kind of standing there like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. He's going to find I out, mean, yeah. oh, no, oh, no. We weren't stormtroopers. Like, everybody was hitting. Uh, so he, he wanders over I... the group. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. He wanders over to you. He's like, ah, he's, he's going to find out. The master's going to know I was involved. Quick, somebody, uh, uh, knock me out. They're not the going to find out. Set, Everybody's set. dead. Set the stun and shoot me. No, they 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 can hear. They're gonna, they're on their way. Somebody, quick! Yeah, I'll I'll do that. You just I was gonna set my gun to rifle I'll butt him or set to stun. Yeah, no, set it to stun and shoot him that way. Sure. So you do that, and he just drops. <laughs> Thank you. Need to invent some Red Bull so people can get their strain back. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of combat, you can choose to either roll cooler vigilance uh, to regain uh, a strain. Is that an individual choice? Mm-hmm. Or is it yeah, it is choice? an individual choice. So it's like after the rush of, of battle, you can make that check. Ooh, oh, oh, I was clearing the dice pool here. Jordy's is clear of the things. So, all right, Jordy, you lose, uh, you lose two strain. Havoc roll again, just because you got that boost die on there. Get rid of that boost die. Oh. I'll get a boost for this. Mm-hmm. Actually, it was blank. I'll let you keep it. You get two strain back. Why did I roll so much better? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you the four. That's the rule. If you roll wrong the first time, you get to re-roll. I'll give you your four. Here, take this red ball. It gives you back more. <laughs> That's the house rule. If it's rolled wrong the first time. Mel, give now, yourself Now, is it uh, per success you get strain removed and you're ignoring the advantage? Yes. Yeah, this is just to okay. regain strain after combat. Is there any other gear in so. this room? Yeah, you, you look it over. Uh, the major domo is just wearing like ordinary everyday clothes. The Gamorians are wearing like kind of like furs and such, um, and they're carrying vibro axes. And that's all you really find on them. This is a a holding cell area. So, uh, guys, do we want to keep the the major domo here, or do we want to like actually take him with us? He sounded like he was going to meet us somewhere else, but I don't know if he ever told us where that somewhere else was. <laughs> he said the yeah. the Royal Gungan Tavern. Uh, the Royal Gungan. And I just kind of... Stick him throw... in a cell and lock the door, and let's be on our way. Oh, gosh. He's extra like... baggage. I'm not going to take him, though. Like, he can help us navigate the whole place. I, I don't know of his chances of living after this little... Yeah. At the time. I mean, he's in a room of dead Gungans. Yeah. Gungans or whatever these guys uh, are. Gamorians. Gamorians. I wish it was Gungans. And right. He just lost a hut. Uh, 1.5 million credits. Um, <laughs> and two snacks. Or, or more. And two snacks. <laughs> I am not mm-hmm. a snack, but I am innocent. I say we, I say we uh, take this guy as, uh, as a little hostage slash guide with us. Yeah. Sounds like and a if guy. he gets out of line, then, you know, we can push him down to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. We can That's feed him to Oh, I guess the, the level below that, <laughs> below the one you're going to. Mm-hmm. All right, Mel, you carry him. Okay. No, I can... no stim packs or anything around. No, no illicit drugs. No illicit drug. No spice. No stim packs. I need some drugs. No death sticks. Mm. All right. No so, electronic uh, devices. He does have a death. I, I guess we should take the vibro axes and oh, we can yeah, we need to take barter a those, right? Vibro axes. The, the major domo does have a, a data pad on him. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, it. Sorry, go ahead. We don't have any cash with us anymore. Oh, do we've we? got these vibro axes so we can like barter. This is a barter planet. No? Yeah. 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 Just sell some axes on the streets. I, um, I got this blue guy we could barter. On his data pad, you see he actually had up on it the 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 way out of here for the the back quote unquote back door, the secret entrance, because he never really revealed to you how to get out before this all happened and you guys knocked him out. So conveniently, 
there are instructions on there and how to how to get out. There's like a map of this this building. <laughs> this is what happens. What are you selling? All right. I shove uh, shove the data pad into Havoc's hand and I say, uh, get us out of here. We'll follow. I usually might uh, be on there hacking the net at this point. Yeah, sending more hot porn. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just make him sleepy. He's got, a little, he's got a little sleepy guy next to him. Sleeping. All right, yeah. I'll use my computers to try and figure out um, where to go. If I can. Sure. This just pulled up, right? Yeah, so. it's it's on the data pad, like the plans of this. Left, uh, right, left, left, right. Yeah, essentially. Oh, you, guys, you guys Down. make your way out of here through the eastmost entrance according to the plans and you can hear like odd voices coming down hallways as you start to approach them you you hang back and you kind of wait and you let them pass and you guys are making your way through and you, you come up on one area and you can hear in a room you can hear the the bounty hunters that captured you you can hear them in there it sounds like they're getting drunk they're kind of celebrating their their capture wait a second <laughs> <laughs> Never What's catch chickens there? before they hatch. Anything? What's that? Does there much going on around here? Like, there's people coming. Uh, every once in a while, like a guard, Gamorian guard, will like shuffle by, or or a a Nikto, and you know, people will be stumbling down, talking to each other, like one or two people. Are these like? Are they in a room by themselves? You can hear voices, but the door is closed, so you don't know who's all in there. Mm. this is really hard to pass up <laughs> where's the thermal detonator when you need one I do need a grenade this is what you did last time with you when you had a room of bad guys right, right. You, can, uh, you can rig this vibro axe to explode can you do that no <laughs> you can I do that explosives? I don't know rig it to explode uh, we can roll for it, I I suppose. Yeah, do, I, I won't say I won't say no, but uh, here let me let me find a <laughs> skill. Do we want to? Do we want to? Uh, do we want to go after these guys? They you... they they would have crap on them. One of them's beat up pretty good. If he's even still with them. If you want what to, you think. You can do a mechanics roll. This is where Aisha Moore would have sh- shone. Right. Um, I've got some mechanics. I don't have as much mechanics Utini. as she has. You want me to help you with Utini stick? I mean, that's what a Vibroax is good for me because I can't use one. <laughs> a Vibroax essentially, like, you, sl- you flick a switch and it just it vibrates. So it just like helps with like cutting or slicing through whatever you're cutting it with. At high frequencies, right? It's a lot of energy. Yes. It's like one of those uh, turkey cutters. Yeah. <laughs> <Those> oscillating <laughs> blades. Yeah. I think you mean pig cutters. Pig cutters. Yeah. <laughs> a ham carver. It's a ham slicer. <laughs> I use mine on bread. Do you want to see if you can MacGyver this? I'll, no. It's no, going to be I'm, difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Oh. But I won't say no. I'll always give you the option to, to try it. All right. We'll, we'll take a vote real quick on if we want to open up the door and go after these guys. Jordy, I don't mind fighting these guys. They've got it coming. <laughs> Jordy, do you want to fight them? Yeah, they hit you in the face. Havoc, you want to fight them? <laughs> uh. I didn't do so well last time. This darn blaster pistol is just not working out for me. <laughs> Zool, do you want to put off pheromones and make him think you're attractive? I think we should hack <laughs> the local <laughs> net and <laughs> exactly <laughs> and rig the room to wait. Explode. Wait, let me we'll think about that. We'll put bounties on the bounty hunter's head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's Zool. <laughs> Uh, I have a feeling I'll be back here to collect them. I'm good. Zool's against it. Yeah. So 
I think here's here's how we do this. I'm carrying this uh, blue dude. I open up the door and kind of walk in. They're gonna be confused. Are you gonna are you gonna do help me? Help you? Yes. Yeah. From from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Thor's like, I think we should do help me to Loki. Loki's like, I don't like help me. I have no idea what that is. That's yeah, when yeah. Thor <laughs> picks up his brother and throws it. At the end. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I think I just walk in with him because it's going to be very confusing why a guy's walking so, in with a blue guy over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. You, and if there's tons of people in the room, then I'll just uh, run out and we won't go after it. So do you want to like? These... Do you want to look in the room before you just like open it and oh. throw a blue guy in? I didn't. I didn't know that was an option. Sure, you can try to open it up and take a peek. Mel likes to jump and then look. <laughs> I'm just going to open the door and if there's a lot of guys in there, I'm just going to turn around and run away. I just always have this image of, uh, you know, Star Wars doors. Door goes, door. <laughs> right? And then they're open. Do yeah. you want me to look in there? I can look in there. Yeah, Jordy, you're small. What, you got guys. x-ray eyes? No, I still have to open up the door, silly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Use do, you your wanna, do you want to try and st- stealth opening the door? Yeah. Okay. Because it's they're very loud, you heard them like two hallways down. I'm just going to give you a black die. So go ahead and roll your stealth. All right. Jobby, jobby. So you succeeded with a oh, whole bunch teeny. of advantage. So you slide it open and you peer in and you see the four bounty hunters. They're sitting around laughing. It looks like they're playing sabac. There's drinks flowing. Uh, but you also see there are four Gamorians in here. And it looks mm. like there's some other bounty hunters also in this room at the table partaking in the uh in the gambling there's another appears to be four very heavily armored uh bounty hunters in here wow it says no bueno there fine nope we'll get them some other time (laughs) you have a thermal detonate i know and jordy jokes you used to those you guys things. had a whole bunch because you like aced some rolls and you're able to. How does a jaw? Yeah, yeah. How does a jaw laugh? Ooh, TD. His his eyes flicker. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, ooh teeny, 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 teeny. <laughs> ooh, teeny. It means to. Uh, it's an expression of pleasure. So. That's weird. Or surprise. Ooh, teeny. So. Ooh, teeny. Ooh, teeny. Um. Yeah. So you guys. Uh. So Jordy reports back like. Probably not a good idea, guys. Okay. <laughs> Big sigh from Mel. Let's go. Right. So you guys you guys make your way through the tunnels and you hit the streets of Narshada. You see well, it's prettier than I thought it was gonna be. This well it's still not great. This giant, massive intertwined city. It looks like any like traces of greenery are long gone and like i said there's just cities built on top of cities on top of cities um looks like corellia yeah it's kind of like corellia so you guys all of a sudden make it outside and again you're bombarded by the the smog and you kind of cough and then you look up and you see oh yeah our our faces are plastered all over the place when you look up at a big hollow net screen displaying the wanted posters and again it's got the the news footage from the the attack at belladon all right you guys are kind of like in a back alley you're not like on the front street or anything but you're you're in the shadows so let's head down to the underdark and mel keep your head down huh well, I already got hit in the face, so I'm clearly not as pretty as I typically am. You look like hamburger. Yeah, but you can't stop smiling when you see people pointing at you. That's true, but I'm carrying this oaf, so he's kind of like my cloak. Yeah, you're you're kind of using him to shield your face. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Havoc and Zool, I don't know. Zool's just constantly emitting pheromones for people not to notice him. I don't know. I just picture this lizard tongue like coming out every so often. <laughs> that is just one weird dude. 
And that's coming from Majawa. He is a weird dude. Havoc, what do you want to do to try and disguise yourself? Go a little incognito. Could wear a uh, uh, loincloth on your face. Here, try my eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> Are you blind in the other eye? I, I don't have another eye. It's oh, like so just skin grown over. Socket. Hmm. I wanted to see like one of the Harry Potter crazy eye professor. <laughs> a cybernetic <laughs> eye. Go <laughs> get a cybernetic <laughs> eye. Um, I feel like I'm going to wheel and deal to get something quickly off someone on the streets to cover myself up, like to disguise myself. So like maybe I quickly trade a vibro axe to someone on the street for their like <laughs> shawl. Sure. Yeah. Do you want me to do that instead? Well, this is the well. This is what he's made to do. This is like his oh. his thing, his calling. So <laughs> yeah, you you guys are standing in this alley, and you see this like uh, you see this. Oh, what are they called? The Devil Man, Devonian, De- Devorian, walk by, and he's wearing like a big cloak, and he, you kind of you call him over. And, he sneers at you with his with his pointed teeth. You go, what do you want? Ah, huh? human, what do you want? Oh, uh, it's me. Yeah, when you call uh, him, he's wearing a big, big billowy cloak. Looks like it'll suit your needs. Uh... Does he? Does he look like a dangerous fellow? I don't want to judge him. Looks, looks like a dangerous fellow. <laughs> he looks like a demon. Yeah, he looks like a devil man. That's racist. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll I'll just use my my charm, and I will. Yeah, I'll stick with charm. I I got. I, one point in charm and uh, just explain that like, hey, like, that's a nice looking, you said he has a cloak? Yeah, he's got a big billowing cloak. Uh, let's say that's a nice looking cloak. Like, like, would are you interested in a trade for, say, a vibro axe? What would I need a vibro axe for? What? Why wouldn't you need a vibro axe? Is what? <laughs> <laughs> he ponders this place like this, you know. He, he ponders this. Oh, oh uh, maybe. Do you want to go ahead and roll charm against him, or sure? So you got two black and one purple, and I'm giving you two black because you're kind of known. <laughs> Your face is like <laughs> on a big hollow net display behind him. All right. Maybe uh, maybe so Jordy succeed. can assist him. You succeed with two threat. Oh. So he goes, oh, that's, that's a finely crafted vibroax. You know, I've always wanted one of those. Just, here, take this old thing. And he gives you the, uh, he gives you the, the cloak and he takes the axe and he's looking it over and he's grinning with his big devilish teeth and he starts walking away and he turns around and he's got a knowing glance in his eye and you see him smile with his pointy devil teeth and he looks down at his axe and he time to go. On. He carries on with his his day. But as you, you guys, you know, walk away, you, you see him keep glancing over his shoulder. As you. As you make your way, that's not weird at all. Into the streets, kill him, kill him, <laughs> kill, kill him, kill him with your other that's, axe. That's <laughs> foreshadowing right there. <laughs> you just got foreshadowed. It's, it's okay. Weird. The GM clearly forgets all of these little things. Not so. all of them. <laughs> I make notes. Just most of them. Just some of them. We had no connection to a hut. And then you we didn't, had to open but it actually worked wall. out that you reminded me of that connection. Oh, I know. Devil with an axe goes down to Havoc's house. Yeah. 
Devil man with axe. This is also being recorded, so I can always go back. And that way I won't forget anymore. <laughs> you won't. You won't. Oh, I will. Don't no, you gonna won't. view it on YouTube. Yeah, don't. No, won't. Don't you tempt me. I will go back and watch it to find all these little these little plot hooks well, you uh you left me. That'll that'll double the views. Oh, Oak's also <laughs> watching, so he'll he'll remind me. <laughs> Ooh, that's a sting. Might actually like edit the video. You you never know what he does. That's true. <laughs> go back, polish up the sound. All right, so you guys are moving through the uh, the upper streets of Narshada, Make your way down to the Duro sector with a uh, with uh, Popara's major domo slung over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. And he wanted you guys to head to the the Royal Gung- Gungan Tavern to uh to meet up with him or his people there and uh we're gonna leave off there i think that's a good a good spot it's gonna be pretty easy to meet up with him there uh on uh (laughs) next week or no we're doing D &D next week right you're good to go again yeah yeah we can go back to mine that's fine um so one thing before we break like i would like uh us not to go to this um the duro sector the well yeah i i don't mind going down to the duro sector but i don't want to go into the bar that we were going to meet him at i'd like to kind of go to a back street alley and kind of wait for him to wake up and have a little conversation with him in the alley privately before we uh, appear in a public place with them that sound okay to everybody or well, sure it sounds like this is kind of a rough and tumble ruinous place we can probably find some cover and whatnot and do that yeah 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 a less uh an area with less eyes on you mm-hmm. just have that conversation with him before because he's probably going to wake up and be surprised that we took him with him yeah i'm surprised you took him with you i figured you would be i was <laughs> thinking how guys... could i screw up the dm that's what you guys do <laughs> That's also what the dice do. That's the other thing. You can't have uh, you can't have set plans with this yeah. game with these dice because the dice will also ruin them for you. Yeah, because devil with an axe. Devil with an axe, grinning, knowing look on his face when he's looking at him. Devorian. Is it Devorian, Devorian right? Yeah. Thank you. That's the name of it. So, yeah, okay. we'll leave off there, and, uh, well, yeah, we'll pick up in two weeks' time then. I'm going to research uh, Red Bull strain-relieving drinks. Strain-relieving drinks? <laughs> uh, even, like, having a good night's rest, I believe, just... Yeah, it just removes really all strain. of it, yeah. It's very easily very easy to get rid of strain in this game. Wounds are a little tougher. You need to use stim packs and such, and uh, back oh, yeah. uh, things like that. that. Because even, like even sleeping some. is hard to get wounds back. It'll yeah. You get... Not with me around. I help you out. We have mm-hmm. a medic now. But strain is very easy to get back. You can even shed it in combat. So it was good to be back at Star Wars. I appreciate it. We're going to have some fun. This game is crazy. It's wild. It, this first session reminded us of how deadly the dice can be. Uh, when you I roll. love these dice. I, do too. I thought they worked out fine. <laughs> almost killing our one of our newest oh you did kill him like it wasn't it was like a <laughs> like no, if he, he didn't have the defenses he naturally has as a bounty hunter he would have died I mean you don't even have you don't even really have armor on right now we should get some armor get some real armor. nobody really has armor on get some bounty hunter armor yeah get a little bit of soak you're all good it didn't help that we rolled uh, four dark side points. No, I only pretty, used one of them, though. Again, sucky. the combat was meant as a learning, a reminder. It wasn't meant to kill you guys on our it first session. You reminded the person that doesn't need reminding. It needed learning. <laughs> they should have done it yes. all over Mel's face. They <laughs> learned it. Learn faster, Yona. <laughs> oh, he learned. He was actually even ahead of the game. He's like, wait a minute, I've got an incidental. I can give you more difficulty dice. But the DM was like, nope, I'm just rolling. Nope, I'm just <laughs> making this happen. But yes, it was fun. Thank you guys for playing. Thank you to the folks for watching. We have Oak 
watching us and uh one crit wonder was here bounty hunter from that channel i've been in discussions and chats with him as of recently and we're working on something together that's uh it's going to be pretty exciting so it was nice of him to stop by and uh we'll pick this up in two weeks time have a good evening everybody yep yep sounds good thank you thanks for that